So when our cell is at rest, the only open channels are the leak channels. When local potentials are being produced, ligand or mechanically gated potassium or sodium channels open. If the channels open for potassium, potassium move out of the cell and hyperpolarize the cell. If sodium channels open, sodium moves into the cell and it depolarizes the cell. We can examine all these effects on a recording of the membrane potential. Here, the membrane potential starts at the resting level, which is minus 70 millivolts. And if potassium channels open, potassium moves out and the cell hyperpolarizes. If sodium channels open, sodium moves in and the cell depolarizes. The potassium movement causing hyperpolarization or sodium movement causing depolarization both are local potentials. Hyperpolarization type of local potentials do not produce anything extra, but depolarization type of local potentials are able to produce our next potential, which is the action potential. This depolarization for sodium, if it reaches a certain level, it is going to, at this level, it is going to let the voltage-gated channels to open. This point at which the voltage-gated channels open, they are either voltage-gated sodium or voltage-gated potassium channels. We will later explain the detail of this. But let's have a look at the action potential in general a little bit. So whenever the threshold level is reached, voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels open. So the threshold is, if we want to define the threshold, we can say that it is the membrane potential level at which voltage-gated channels are opening. So the first voltage-gated channel that is going to open is voltage-gated sodium channels. So when voltage-gated sodium channels open, what is going to happen? Here, what type of channels, what are the channels that are open? First of all, leak channels for sodium are always open. By ligand or mechanically gated channel opening, let's say, more sodium is able to come in and in addition to these voltage gated sodium channels are also open. Now we have a very big number of voltage gated channels that will let sodium into the cell. If you are going to ask what are the conditions for the forces at this point, we can say we can look at the position here. For sodium, here was our condition for sodium. The concentration gradient for sodium is also going to, is going to stay same, 61 force for pushing uh, sodium into the cell. But at this point, the cell, electrical potential of the cell is a little bit different. Usually, the threshold is uh, 15, approximately 15, 20 millivolts less negative compared to the resting membrane potential. So in our example in this cell, probably it is around minus 55 millivolts. So at this point, which is marked by a blue dot when the membrane potential reaches the threshold, the forces acting on sodium are here, we, ca we can talk about them here. The electrical force is no longer 70 millivolts. This has dropped in amplitude a little bit, and now it is 
55 millivolts. The concentration gradient does not change for sodium, so the concentration force for sodium is going to stay the same. In, as a result of this, the total force is going to be a little smaller, which is something like 116 millivolts. So, with these millivolt force, total driving force, and with all these channels open, sodium will be pushed in large amounts into the cell, and this is going to depolarize the cell even further, producing our the first part of our action potential. This is the depolarization phase of action potential. <clears throat> when you reach the threshold, I said that voltage-gated sodium and potassium channels are going to open. Uh, Voltage-gated ch sodium channels open a bit earlier then, and then they close. At a point, voltage-gated sodium channels close, and this time, voltage-gated potassium channels open. So, imagine that voltage-gated sodium channels are closed. The only, leak channel, the only channels that are open for sodium to pass through under these conditions are leak channels, and if the stimulus is going on, it, there's also the ligand channels that are open. But if the stimulus is not going on, even the ligand-gated ligand -gated sodium channels may be lost. So, here, at this point, where I can mark with a green dot. There is only, probably there is only leak channels for sodium. What about the channels for potassium? In this case, here, the leak channel, the total amount of channels is going to depend on the total number of leak channels for potassium and a large number of now open voltage-gated potassium channels. Through these channels, potassium will start to move into... It, 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 excuse me, potassium will start to move out of the cell. And as potassium moves out of the cell, this means that positive charges are leaving the cell, making the cell membrane potential less um, more and more, excuse me, more and more negative, and this is called the repolarization phase of our action potential. At every point along the action potential, the forces acting on the ions can be examined, but we gave one example at the threshold point acting on sodium. Let's give another example at the peak of the action potentials. What are the forces on uh, potassium at the peak of the action potential here? If we go back to our cell at the resting membrane potential level, what were the forces for potassium? The electrical force was the membrane potential 70, and 80 was our Nernst potential. Here, at the peak of the action potential, the electrical force is no longer minus 70, but it is some, something like plus 20 millivolts. So, plus 20, when it is plus 20 millivolts, it means that inside of the cell is now positively charged. So, this positive charge is expected to push potassium out of the cell with a force of 20. The concentration force for Potassium is not going to change and it will stay as an 80 amplitude force pushing potassium out of the cell. You see here now there is a big change in the forces acting on potassium and it is no longer as small 
as 10 millivolts, but now it is approximately 100 millivolts of a big, big force pushing potassium out of the cell through the, le the leak and lots and lots of voltage-gated potassium channels. And under these conditions, potassium will move out of the cell and it will produce the repolarization phase of the action potential. Potassium will move out until the membrane potential reaches the resting membrane potential level.